Hello and welcome to the 7 o'clock news from Bahrain International. I'm Shog Mohammed. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa today issued Edict 7 of 2018 on appointing directors at the National Oil and Gas Authority. Under the edict, Mohammed Saad Abdel Al Hajri was appointed as Human and Financial Resources Director, as Ahmed Ali Al Mannai as Planning and Development Director. Abdelaziz Abdel Qadir Mohamed Saeed as Petroleum Industries Development Director and Adnan Saeed Mohamed Al Makhrak as Exploration and Production Development Director. The Oil Minister will implement the edict, which takes immediate effect and will be published in the official Gazette. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Prime Minister, Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa, received today the outgoing Ambassador of the Republic of Pakistan to Bahrain, Javid Malik. The Crown Prince praised the distinguished bilateral ties, cooperation and coordination at all levels, which are based on the mutual keenness to further develop the deep-rooted relations between the two friendly countries. His Royal Highness noted the appreciation Pakistan receives for its stances and efforts to maintain stability and combat terrorism in all its forms. The Crown Prince noted the outstanding efforts of the outgoing Pakistani ambassador during his tenure in Bahrain, which has contributed to further bolster bilateral relations. He wished the ambassador success in the future duties. For his part, Ambassador Malik expressed thanks and appreciation to His Royal Highness the Crown Prince for his keenness on strengthening the Bahraini-Pakistani relations and for the support he had received that contributed to the success of his diplomatic mission in the Kingdom. The Minister of Interior, Lieutenant General Sheikh Rashid bin Abdullah Al Khalifa, head of the delegation of Bahrain participating in the 36th session of the Arab Interior Ministries Council, held today in Algeria, where he delivered a speech. The Minister's Council praised the role of security bodies in Arab countries in thwarting terrorist plots and eliminating a number of terrorist cells and organizations with foreign agenda aiming to disturb security and stability in Arab countries. The Council affirmed cooperation to prevent the terrorist activities and drain their intellectual and financial sources. The Arab Ministers of Interior stressed the importance of unifying Arab efforts to face the current intellectual security challenges and combating extremism through social media networks. On the sidelines of the meeting, the Minister of Interior met with Her Royal Highness Saud, Saudi Minister of Interior and Honorary President of the Arab Interior Ministers' Council, Prince Abdelaziz bin Saud bin Naif al Saud, during which he congratulated His Royal Highness on becoming the Council's Honorary President in recognizing the role of the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia in supporting security cooperation, wishing His Royal Highness further success. The meeting discussed security cooperation and coordination, as well as issues of mutual interest. ويطيب لي بداية أن أبارك لصاحب السمو الملك الأمير عبد العزيز بن سعود بن نايف آل سعود على تزكيته بالإجماع رئيسا فخريا لمجلس وزراء الداخلية العرب متمنيا لسموه التوفيق والنجاح وإني أنتهز هذه الفرصة لأشيد بهذا الحضور المسؤول لهذا الاجتماع وهذا الأمر بحد ذاته يعبر عن مدى اهتمام القيادات الأمنية العربية وتصميمها على تحقيق الأمن والاستقرار بالرغم من صعوبة التحديات وكما تعلمون فإننا اليوم نواجه تنامي أشكال الجريمة المنظمة بأساليب مبتكرة وتنوع التحديات الأمنية إضافة إلى النقل الخطيرة التي وصلت إليها الجريمة العابرة للحدود وخصوصا في ظل بيئة تساعد على انتشار الأفكار المتطرفة 
الأمر الذي جعل من الإرهاب تهديداً عاماً لحياة الناس في مناطق متعددة من العالم أعني بذلك مشارق الأرض ومغاربها أصحاب السمو والمعالي إن أخوانكم من رجال الأمن في مملكة البحرين يتعاملون بصورة مستمرة مع تدخلات إيرانية ممنهجة تستهدف المساس بأمننا الداخلي واستقرارنا فإيران اليوم أصبحت ملجأ لمن يرتكب جرما ويكون مطلوبا للعدالة وقد تجاوزت المواثيق والأعراف الدولية فهي لا تعترف بما هو صادر عن المنظمة الدولية الانتربول أو بالنشرات الحمراء لقد وضعت نفسها فوق القانون وسخرت أراضيها ومعسكراتها لتدريب الإرهابيين وتصدير الأسلحة والمتفجرات وهذا موثق بالأدلة والبراهين القاطعة وإن تدخلها في شؤوننا الداخلية هو متعدد المحاور على سبيل المثال المشاريع الاستثمارية والاقتصادية ويقصد منها توفير أموال بالداخل لتخدم نفوذها سواء من قبل أشخاص أو مؤسسات أو لتنتهي في أيدي منفذي العمليات الإرهابية المدارس الإيرانية تعمل على نشر الثقافة الفارسية وتكون قاعدة من الشباب تؤمن بمبادئ الثورة الخمينية وولاية الفقيه ويكون ولاءها لإيران إضافة إلى تجنيد قياديين للتيارات السياسية وخصوصا من قبل الأشخاص الدارسين في إيران أيضا ذريعة حماية الطائفة الشيعية وهذه عبارة عن وسيلة لنشر ثقافة التطرف الطائفي على حساب الوطنية من خلال ما تسيطر عليه من جمعيات خيرية وحوزات دينية مما يؤدي إلى وجود قاعدة متطرفة تدين بالولاء للقيادة في إيران على حساب الولاء للوطن وهذا الأمر يشمل شرائح مختلفة في المجتمع من الرجال والنساء من كل الفئات سياسيين ورجال دين وأصحاب رؤوس أموال ومهنيين كتاب وعلاميين فلقد أرادت إيران أن تشعل فتيل أزمة طائفية إلا أننا ولله الحمد لم نعطيها الفرصة لتحقيق هذا الهدف الخطير وأن تخطيطهم لتنفيذ مآربهم هو تخطيط بعيد الأمد وإننا تعاملنا مع هذه التدخلات على مختلف المحاور بتكاتف وتعاون من قبل الجميع On the sidelines of the meeting, the Minister of Interior met with the Royal Hi His Royal Highness, the Prime Minister of Interior and Honorary President of the Arab Interior Ministers Council, Prince Abdulaziz bin Saud bin Naif Al Saud, during which he congratulated His Royal Highness on becoming the Council's Honorary Presented in recognition of the role of the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia in supporting security cooperation, wishing His Royal Highness further success. The meeting discussed security cooperation and coordination, as well as issues of mutual interest. The Minister of Interior also met with the UAE Deputy Prime Minister and Minister of Interior, His Highness Lieutenant General Sheikh Saeed bin Zayed Al Nahyan. Sheikh Rashid bin Abdullah praised the deep rooted historic relations between the two countries' leaderships and people. The two sides' means of bolstering cooperation in the field of security work, as well as issues of mutual concern.
The Minister of Interior met with his Lebanese counterpart, Nihad al mashnouq where he praised the two countries' keenness to further develop joint action and face the increasing security challenges at the regional and international levels, at the forefront of which is combating terrorism. The Minister of Interior also met with his Jordanian counterpart, Samir al-Mubaydin, in which they discussed ways to further develop security cooperation and coordination, in addition to other regional developments. The Minister of Interior also met with the Minister of Interior of Iraq, Qasim al araji in which they discussed means of reinforcing cooperation between the two countries in the field of security work as well as issues of mutual concerns. The Minister of Interior was accompanied by a delegation that included the Ambassador of the Kingdom of Bahrain to Algeria, the Ministry of Interior's Under Secretary, as well as a number of officials in the Ministry. The Minister of Foreign Affairs also signed the minutes of the Statute of the Arab Court for Human Rights with the Arab League Secretary General Ahmed Abu al -Ghid. He affirmed that establishing an Arab Court for Human Rights came as a result of the initiative of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa and the proposal submitted by the Kingdom of Bahrain to the Arab League, which the Arab League Council has approved in its summit. Sheikh Khalid added that this reflects the keenness of His Majesty the King to promote respect for rights and freedom and also highlights the importance placed by the Kingdom of Bahrain to protecting human rights. The establishment of the Arab Court for Human Rights stems from the keenness of the state's parties to adhere to their human rights obligations. The Minister of Foreign Affairs, Sheikh Khalid bin Ahmed bin Mohammed Al Khalifa, met with the Minister of Foreign Affairs of the Arab Republic of Egypt, Samah Shikri, on the sidelines of the 149th Ordinary Session of the Arab League Council at the ministerial level in Cairo. The meeting highlighted the distinguished relations between Bahrain and Egypt and their continuous development that reflects a strong joint cooperation between the two countries. It also stressed the importance of continued coordination regarding all issues in various regional and international forums. The meeting also discussed the latest regional developments as well as the issues on the agenda of the meeting. The Minister of Housing, Basim bin Yagub al Hamar, received at the Ministry's courts the affiliates of the first Deputy Prime Minister's Fellowships Program for the development of national cadres in the framework of their familiarization visit to the ministries and government organizations to identify the nature of their work closely. The Housing Minister affirmed that the National Cadres Development Program, sponsored by His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Premier, Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, supports the formation of the leading youth who contribute to the development march, expressing confidence in the continuation of the program's success in the development of Bahraini competencies. The Minister hailed the program's goals that are based on honing the professional skills of National Cadres, Al-Hamar delivered a presentation on the plans and programs of the ministry and its efforts to provide housing for low-income citizens, asserting that the ministry is making remarkable progress in constructing and allocating housing units. 
He also reviewed the features of the new city projects that are constructed according to the latest modern concepts. The minister also delivered a presentation on the ministry's steps to activate a partnership with the private sector. The meeting discussed the ministry's vision to develop housing policies in cooperation with the United Nations Development Office through the cooperation documents signed between the two parties. Following the meeting, the program's affiliates toured the ministry's departments and the Customs Service Center to identify the ministry's work and administration mechanism. The Minister of Information Affairs, Ali bin Mohammed al rumayhi attended the familiarization meeting organized by the National Communications Center at the Ministry of Information Affairs in the presence of members from the representatives and shura councils, journalists and media personnel. The Minister affirmed the keenness of the National Communications Center on unifying the government's media approach and promoting it locally and internationally through strengthening the partnership between official authorities and national organizations. He expressed pride in the young national media cadres and its role in activating the center's role as a strategic connecting point between government authorities. He noted the keenness to provide all poten potentialities and facilities for the National Communications Center to continue its duties effectively and professionally as a center that is financially and administratively dependent from the ministry to serve the media development according to the modern mechanism that develops human resources and technical competence. Aramehe affirmed that the conducting meeting affirms the importance of concerting the national efforts of the executive, legislative and judicial authorities, as well as the journalistic and civil organizations as main partners in developing national media, increasing its impact and supporting its role in protecting national security and stability. The chief executive of the National Communications Center, Dr. Mohammed Ali Bahzad, gave a presentation on the goals of the center, its duties and jurisdiction, according to Royal Decree 1 of 2016 on the development of the plans and strategies of the government media approach and coordination with the executive tasks of communication and government media and communication strategy, as well as managing the operations and activities of communication and public information to contribute to the consolidation of the speech and highlighting it in various forms and media, local regional and international. He highlighted the development of relationships and positive partnerships with several news agencies and regional and international press and media institutions by providing them with the correct news and information and responding to any inaccurate reports or misinformation.